It's amazing how we can take a blob of data, compress it, and perfectly retrieve it back. But how does it really work? Data compression is integral to the applications, whether it's compressing a folder to a zip file, or sending some payload from client to server, or lossy compression of an audio file. Now, many kinds of compression mechanisms exist out there, but for this video, we will dive into the Huffman's algorithm. And here's our flow. We are going to cover two lossless compression algorithms, fixed size and Huffman's algorithm. Consider an ASCII-based string message. How much size does this occupy? We can create a frequency map to count occurrences of each character in the string. Then we can multiply them by size of one ASCII character and add them up to get the total size. Now, 8 bits are capable of storing 96 unique symbols, which is an overkill for our case. So can we do better? Seems like if we can somehow represent our symbols in less than 8 bits, we will see an improvement. Now, an n-bit encoding can represent two raised to n unique symbols because each of those n places can either contain 0 or 1. Thus, to find the least k which can encode our four symbols, we can use the above concept and obtain the size of 2. We will again calculate the cost of a message but with the encoding size of 2 to get our message cost as 18 bits. So, did we go from 72 to 18 bits? Not really. You see, although we can encode or decode our message in lesser space, the other applications cannot. It's different from the ASCII because ASCII is a standard understood by all systems. Henceforth, we need to provide the symbol encoding table along with our message. This fixed information comes out as 40 bits which along with our message cost is 58 bits. This is a decent improvement from 72 bits, but we can get even better reduction in cost as depicted in this graph, where the symbol set is constant but the total character count increases along the x-axis. Finally, decoding process for string is trivial. We just have to go over the string with an offset of k, 2 in our case, and use the 4-bit symbol table to get the original message back. You can see we have taken the encoding table along with the cost versus character count graph. As we vary the counts in our table, our cost changes in the graph correspondingly. Now, what if the distribution of frequencies is skewed? As you see, A forms 87% of the entire message but it occupies the same 2-bit space as other symbols. Representing A in a single bit would optimize our encoding further and here is when we discuss the idea of Huffman encoding. Huffman's algorithm is a greedy approach to generate a minimal prefix code. Prefix code simply means that the set of encodings cannot have a same prefix. If we look at the fixed size encoding from previous sections, it's easy to see that no two encodings can have the same prefix. This might not be true for the variable size encoding though, as you can see A is a prefix of B. This is a problem because decoding of a string becomes ambiguous in such situations, as you can see in the example. To make sure we adhere to prefix code constraint and still get an optimal encoding, we create a Huffman tree. Let's take an example where the frequency distribution is skewed. Take all the symbols along with the counts in a row. Connect two of the nodes at a time whose counts are minimum. The count of new node should have some of its child nodes. Repeat this process until you exhaust all the nodes and a root node is obtained. Label the left branch from each node as 0 and the other branch as 1. You just created a Huffman tree. The process of encoding becomes simple now. For each character, you have to start at root, traverse down till the leaf node and add zeros or ones as encountered during the path. The encodings you see adhere to the prefix code convention. And now we can calculate the cost by multiplying each character by its encoding size, which comes out less than the fixed 2 bit encoding cost. Decoding the string is trivial, we just have to traverse it once and keep on replacing the bits with appropriate characters from the table. We mentioned earlier that Huffman is a greedy algorithm which means it optimizes the cost at each step to get an overall optimal solution. A very simple intuition for this is having a set of books and just for now assume that a bigger book means it's more readily used. Then how can we have an optimal stack to minimize the time of access? You just keep the most used book at the top, followed by the lesser used ones. The less important ones can take the time to get picked, but we should prioritize the important ones first. We are essentially doing the same thing in Huffman coding, assigning more bits to less frequent characters by pushing them further away from the root of the tree. Can we prove this formally though? It is possible using the exchange argument. 
we can have two characters from a random string not following the Huffman pattern. That is more frequent character have larger size. We can get the cost from these two characters as we did earlier. Now, if we exchange their sizes to adhere to Huffman's optimal step, you can see we get a smaller cost, which proves that any two characters in a string are better off encoded as Huffman's condition so as to reduce their partial cost, which adds up and reduces the overall cost. This concludes our section. We have reached the end of our video. If you are still watching, thank you so much. This is Code Sorcery. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel.